Today, we're on the Mount of Olives, following the journey of Jesus. This is where he ascended to heaven and, according to the Bible, where he is destined to return. So, if you're ready, let's begin. The Mount of Olives was a special place for Jesus. He came here during moments of joy, like his triumphal entry, and during times of deep reflection and prayer, often teaching his disciples here. But this sacred mountain also witnessed some of the most challenging moments of his life. After the Last Supper, in his final night of freedom, Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane, located at the foot of the Mount of Olives. Here, he endured a period of such intense agony that he sweat drops of blood, fully aware that soon he would be betrayed by Judas, arrested, tried by Caiaphas, condemned by Pontius Pilate, and crucified the following day. Today, however, we're focusing on the final story of Jesus on this mountain, his ascension. From the highest point on the Mount of Olives, he ascended to heaven. We're at a high spot with an incredible view, but if you look just over to the side, you'll see an even higher peak. That's where the ascension took place, and we'll head in that direction. Did you know why this mountain is called the Mount of Olives? In biblical times, it was covered in olive trees. Even today, you can see some, though the landscape has changed. For instance, the ancient Jewish cemetery at the base has expanded, and some churches and even a hotel have been built on the mount. So, while there are fewer olive trees than there once were, some still remain, connecting us to the past. As we walk, we're not just retracing his steps symbolically. Many sites in the Holy Land require us to travel on foot, just as Jesus and his disciples did. It's an intense experience to literally follow in his footsteps. Now, as we ascend to the highest point on the mount, our first stop will be at the Church of Pater Noster, or the Church of the Lord's Prayer. Here, we're entering one of the four oldest churches in the Holy Land. Though it has been destroyed and rebuilt over centuries, Archaeological remnants show that this has been a place of Christian worship since the early followers of Jesus. Because of recent conflicts, there are fewer visitors, and renovations are underway to restore and preserve this holy site for future pilgrims. In Jesus' time, the Mount of Olives could be a harsh place due to intense weather conditions, heat, rain, and strong winds. Jesus often retreated into caves for shelter while teaching. One of those caves, right here, is where he taught his disciples the Lord's Prayer twice, once in Galilee and the second time here in Judea on the Mount of Olives. Imagine that, 2,000 years ago, Jesus stood in this very place, speaking to his disciples in Hebrew or Aramaic. Moving along, the Bible describes Jerusalem as a house of prayer for all nations, Today, you can feel this vision in action. Just moments ago, we saw a group from South Korea leaving, and on any typical day, you'd see groups from various countries arriving, one after the other, all united in their faith. When this church was built, they included the Lord's Prayer in different languages, honoring nations from around the world, including Portugal and Brazil. You'll notice the Portuguese text is slightly different from what we're used to, as it's an archaic Portuguese, predating modern language reforms. However, recently, they added a second version in Brazilian Portuguese as a tribute to the country. One unique feature here is the inclusion of the Lord's Prayer in Braille. This makes it accessible to everyone, allowing even visually impaired visitors to connect with the prayers on these sacred walls. As we continue our journey to the site of the Ascension, this sacred space reminds us of the universal message of Jesus, uniting people from all walks of life in every corner of the earth in shared faith. We're heading in the right direction, and I'm excited to invite you to stay tuned until the end of this video for a special surprise. Take a look at this yellow sign in multiple languages, it reads Chapel of the Ascension, clearly marking this as a Christian site. But here's the question, why does a place labeled as the Chapel of the Ascension now have a minaret, 
meaning it's used as a mask. Let's find out. As you can see, the entrance is currently closed, but someone will arrive soon to open it just for us. Notice the two doors here. The green door leads to the ascension area, where we're going, while the glass door opens to a different section of the mosque, which is an active site of Muslim prayer. Beneath the mosque, inside, there are ancient Byzantine Christian tombs, believed to belong to Christian pilgrims from around 1,000 years ago. However, non-Muslims, like us, are not allowed into this section. But here, in the part where we're allowed, the entrance fee is only 10 shekels, about $3. Now, we've finally entered this significant site. Just a few meters away lies the location of Jesus' ascension, a pivotal moment in biblical history recorded in the books of Luke and Acts, and often referenced elsewhere. This sacred place has drawn pilgrims for centuries. One of the earliest records is by Egeria, a Christian pilgrim who visited the Holy Land in 384 and documented her journey. She described her visit to a high, open area on this very mount, identifying it as the site of Jesus' ascension, near the Paternoster cave we visited earlier. Let's take a look at the archaeology here. In Jesus' time and the centuries following, this area was an open peak on the mountain. Around 390 AD, a church was built on this site, intentionally designed with an open roof to honor the biblical story of the Ascension. Sadly, in 614 AD, the Persian invasion devastated the area, destroying nearly all the churches here, including this one. But a few years later, the Frankish bishop reconstructed the church, keeping the open ceiling intact. Look around at the remains of the original Byzantine church, these stone foundations and columns are from that era. There's also a unique tradition associated with this site. Once a year, on the Feast of the Ascension, 40 days after Easter, Christians gather here for a special celebration. Different churches have their own altars here, the Armenians, who became the first Christian nation in 301, have a space, as do the Copts, the Egyptian Church, and the Syriac Church. These denominations come together to honor the Ascension on this significant day. Once again, the Church was destroyed but later rebuilt by the Crusaders. If you look at these beautiful marble columns and intricately carved capitals, they date from that Crusader period, when the Church was reconstructed with an open design to the heavens. This lasted until Saladin's conquest in 1187 when he converted many Christian sites, including this one, into mosques. The walls and ceiling were closed, and it remains a mosque to this day. But let's move forward now to our main purpose, experiencing the Ascension site and reflecting on Jesus' ascent and prophesied return. Let's explore this whole structure and go in together. We are now inside the Chapel of the Ascension. Right here, we have something extraordinary, a stone believed to be from the time of Jesus, said to mark the very spot from which he ascended to heaven. This stone has been preserved throughout history, with protective stones placed around it to maintain access while also safeguarding it from damage. Given this meaningful location, let's read the biblical passage describing the Ascension. The disciples gathered with Jesus and asked if he was going to restore the kingdom to Israel. Jesus replied, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After saying this, Jesus was taken up before their eyes, hidden by a cloud. The passage goes on in Acts 1 verse 11, Men of Galilee, the angels said, Why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. This incredible promise assures us that, just as Jesus ascended, he will return in the same way. Many believe his return will occur on the Mount of Olives, 
connecting this holy site with future events. This place isn't just about the past. Reflecting on the ascension, its historical structures, and archaeological finds, I also think about the future, about the biblical prophecies that may unfold here. Now, I mentioned a special surprise for you all. I'd like to introduce my father, Shalom, everyone. He has a big announcement. Shalom. My dear daughter and everyone watching, I'm thrilled to announce an exciting new tour to Turkey and Greece. It will be a journey that brings the Bible to life in ways you'll never forget. Join me for an unforgettable, soul-nourishing trip. Thank you, Dad. This will be a unique adventure through the pages of the Bible. For more information, you can find the link below. I hope you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to leave a like, and I'll see you in the next one. As we stand here at this profound site of the Ascension, we are reminded not only of a powerful moment in history but of the promise that it represents, a promise of hope, faith, and the ultimate return. The story of Jesus' ascension inspires countless believers who come here to reflect on what it means to live a life rooted in faith and expectation. Every step through these ancient stones and relics connects us not only to the past but also to the future that the Bible foresees. It's a future that calls us to stay grounded in faith, to look towards the heavens with hope, and to be ready for the divine fulfillment yet to come. If you felt the depth of this journey today, know that there's more to explore and experience. And with our upcoming biblical tour through Turkey and Greece, we invite you to join us in stepping through the pages of history, where each site, each story, and each sacred memory enriches our faith and understanding. Until then, may this place and its significance resonate within you, filling you with peace and a renewed sense of purpose. Thank you for being with us on this journey. Until next time, may your path be blessed.